recording in progress, so you know it's still confirmed. Um, so climate change mitigation can be low carbon, and we are now more bold and ambitious to uh, reach to net zero carbon neutrality. So the climate change mitigation, this is where the net zero is belonging to. So uh, mitigation plus adaptation is climate, and with other environmental issues, we call it green. It's it's broader term, and if we include environmental to uh, social to environmental, it, we say social environmental, and as I just mentioned, all of them can be sustainable. So this is just uh, the position of where the net zero is located in in the un umbrella term of sustainable development. This is by UNEP. Um, then what's net zero? This, uh, in um, 2018, the IPCC released the special report on global warming of 1.5, and they said we need to keep the global average temperature below a uh, rise 1.5 degrees to prevent the climate change crisis. So in practice, this is uh, the ambitious goal of the global society, and they reduce global anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050. So the simple definition of the net zero widely used defines this as a state of balance between emissions and emissions reductions. So it's a plus minus, then it becomes a zero or close to zero. Uh, reducing emissions is one of the pillars of that zero, and the other pillar should be increasing absorption or removal capacity of carbon um, carbon emissions. So on the left side in the picture, the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, this is about the reducing the reduction of emissions from the industry, from the aviation, from the transport, from the energy and also agriculture and livestock. So this is the reduction part, so it should be minus. And the other part is the removal or um, absorption. So this should, in, this should plus. So uh, it, the, the, the forestry can be the one of the biggest uh, the platform where the carbon emissions could be reduced. Um, and also there is the technology called CCUS, um, the carbon capture util utilization and storage. So they capture the carbon emissions from um, the facilities. And also there is also direct, direct air capture. So plus and minus, then it becomes close to zero. This is the concept, basic concept of net zero. Uh, this is from the IPCC report. Uh, if, if you see on the picture on the left, um, the, the graph above zero is the, the reduction and, the, and the, 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 the bar below zero is the absorption. Uh, so there are the sectors, uh, buildings, industry, transport, and also uh, mostly from energy sector. And uh, here, Lulu at CF is uh, land use and land use change and forestry, which is the absorption of the, um, the emissions uh, by uh, the forest nation. This is the basic concept of how we can reach to net zero by reducing and by absorb absorbing um, the emissions of CO2. Uh, I just brought the example of Korea. Korea has cemented NDC naturally deter, uh, determined the contributions to UNFCCC before the COP26 last year. And as you um, already um, just understood, uh, our NDC is divided into two, the emission reduction and emission um, absorption or removal and removal. So because Korea is uh, the industry driven country, uh, especially the carbon intensive industries like uh, the steel and automobile. So we have the industry part as one of the biggest, um, the, has the biggest potential for reduction, in, especially using climate technologies like CCUS and hydrogen. And we also have transportation 
um, and also building is the one of the biggest um, the emitting sector, especially in urban areas. And Korea is Korea's urbanization rate is more than ninety two percent. So building is the one of the um, the important and significant sector that has the potential for the reduction of CO two emissions. And also we have a carbon sinks, um, the reforestation. And also CCUS is one uh, important uh, technology for the reduction, especially from the industry. But we do not have enough land for the store for the storage of the emissions. So we need definitely need international uh, cooperation for reduction. And this is where my institute uh, responsibility responsibility lies in actually. Um, let me move to the global level and the global trend of net zero actions. So the Paris Agreement aims of limiting global warming to well below two degrees and pursuing average toward 1.5. And before COP26, 2021, um, uh, the countries, the parties of the agreement submitted their NDCs. Um, if you see the picture on the left, um, the, the Paris Agreement, the countries decide, I mean, uh, agree to um, agree to limit the global warming um, and below 1.5. And by two, 2100, they want to um, remain the, the global temperature uh, by 1.5 uh, and under under the degree of the 1990 level. So if you see the picture, even with indices by the countries, in the condition that all the countries really achieve such uh, carbon reduction, still we have big gap from the 1990 level to the even achievement of the indices by all parties. So which, which um, says to us that it's a long way to go and there should be more ambitious and bold um, actions and um, technological innovation and also the participation by different sectors and different actors to join uh, this journey of a carbon a neutrality journey uh, all around the world. Um, on the on the right, uh, there is the very um, like a, it's a kind of race, and they just show which country has achieved the carbon net neutrality, and which countries have uh, legislated carbon neutrality or net zero uh, in their law, and also which countries have have now in preparation for the legislation and also which countries have in, uh, integrated the concept of carbon neutrality in their policies. Mm -hmm. So let me um, just show you one website um, here for you to just follow just shortly. So should I stop sharing and change uh, to the website, right? This is how Pleasure. it works. That okay. should be okay, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or, okay. Yep. So this is a net zero emissions race uh, by Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. So you can just go to this website. This is already given in your presentation file. So there are uh, many countries who legislated carbon neutrality in their law, including South Korea and Japan. And if you go a little further, then they made decision that we're going to achieve carbon neutrality by that year. So, and can, okay, uh, how to, yeah, made it. And you can go to this website as well. 
then you can see the world map, which countries um, have done which kind of actions for carbon neutrality. And there are 139 countries um, who have made the declaration and also companies and cities and regions. So this is the current status of the carbon neutrality action by different countries, cities, and also companies. So uh, you can just have a look at uh, this website. Um, let me go back to my presentation. Okay. And bring it back to here, right. Um, so this is the emissions gap by UNEP, and we still have the gap for the achievement of carbon neutrality by 2050. And on the right side, because of the COVID pandemic, uh, we have actually another opportunity to whether to succeed or uh, fail, whether we have green stimulus, whether we put more money for the green investment, then we can possibly reach to the 1.5 Paris compatible goal. But if we fail, like what we did after 20, 2008 economic global crisis, then we have to rebound to fossil fuels. So we are in the very uh, import um, the the critical moment whether we can achieve carbon neutrality or we just bound back to the, the, the traditional way of development. Um, so this is also the green recovery status. So I just put here uh, on the top the website for you to check. Uh, how how much um, effort your the, each country um, has put for the green recovery and keep on their way to carbon neutrality. So you can check this website uh, for you to understand about the world worldly um, the trend of carbon neutrality. So let me uh, move to the second part, um, the climate change governance and net zero governance. Um, I will briefly introduce this framework by World Bank. So how they define climate change governance is actually three terms. Uh, the institutions to address governance failures and incentives and also building capacity for climate action. So I, I made the bold uh, for the key terms. The first is the coordination among many government and non-government actors. Um, I will also um, keep um, um, introducing about the case of three countries briefly, Costa Rica, Japan, and Korea. Um, but there are different structure, governance structure according to their uh, country context. But basically, uh, the climate change is complex. And this is not a, a, a touched by one or two ministries or one or two sectors or one or two actors. So it, there should be active coordination among different actors and different sectors. So this is the, the main concept for climate change governance. And also, um, as I've, sh I've shown you, that there should be the legislation that uh, should be the umbrella term, umbrella um, the role to lead the carbon neutrality actions by different uh, different uh, actors and sectors. Um, and also, there should be the evidence how much uh, the it could be the last three of carbon emissions and by which sector and uh, also there should be the time frame and the scenarios um, to and indicate um, how much of carbon reductions should be achieved by which sector by which year so there should be the evidence and information for climate policy and also the mainstreaming it can include planning, it can include finance, the government budget, and the investment. And also um, it should be integrated into the government, government of fiscal systems so that the public resources can be put into climate policies and actions by different ministries. And the 
it's very important to have uh, incentives, especially for enterprises and private sector, such as the tax reduction or incentives as uh, so subsidies for um, like the um, the immobility cars and the charging infrastructure, something like this. So there should be different schemes of incentives to encourage uh, climate actions. And definitely the stakeholder engagement by different sectors and actors, different levels of government, national and local, and also communities, and by public sector and private sector, also civil uh, society. So stakeholder engagement is the key for the comprehensive and integrated approach to carbon neutrality. Um, by our project, uh, by UNUIS, uh, the, uh, there, uh, we are under the project called KECO Global Net Partnership, and based on the case studies of three countries, Japan, Costa Rica, and Korea, uh, the, the Net Zero Partnership team um, has developed the analytical framework for assessing Net Zero adaptation readiness and needs of countries. So regarding the governance, uh, there can be three levels to see uh, the readiness of the governance. The first is policy level. It's about the legislation and policy. And the second part is a technical level. It's about the capacity building necessary for main actors such as ministries and different stakeholders and how much they are ready to initiate and perform such a transition to net zero. And there is also implementation level, uh, such as implementation mechanisms, including finance, including capacity building of stakeholders. So let me a little bit dive into details about this the framework. So the target is to develop a carbon neutrality framework for governance. And there are four sub targets. First is legislation. The second is governing body, uh, the agency who will really uh, lead this uh, the journey. And the third one is funding scheme, so finance. And the fourth one is the implementation. So it can be divided into indicators and how many new policies um, are developed and implemented and how many existing policies are updated, which is in line with carbon neutrality. And uh, how many ministries um, um, are entitled or authorized to uh, do their own uh, policies according to their role and responsibility of the ministries, and also how uh, different stakeholder groups are uh, are, in, are invited to join on the actions. And also definitely the fund uh, and the finance is one of the important and critical factors and which will be uh, delivered um, in more detail uh, at the next section uh, by Ms. Ms. Yang when she covers about the Carbon Neutrality Framework Act. Um, so I will pass here uh, with this. And also, there should be different scale levels, administrative levels, from the national level to subnational to the local level. So it can uh, be the useful framework to assess and, and um, to check whether the governance for net zero is ready. Mm. So this is the brief, uh, the result of the study of the net zero project. So we had the three comparisons of governance, net zero governance by Korea, Costa Rica, and Japan. And three of the countries, they have proactive and pro pro comprehensive approach, and all of them are led by central government. But the difference here is that both Korea and Japan, they are more or less inter-ministerial coordination communications by different ministries. In For Korean case, around seven to eight ministries, they take charge on um, the leading role in doing um, the development and implementation of the policies. But while Costa Rica, uh, the, their, their carbon neutrality is led by the leadership of the Ministry of Environment and Energy. Um, 
So why do they have different government structures? Uh, this is because of their different economic structure and also uh, emission characteristics. So Costa Rica is highly centralized approach. It's because uh, historically their economy's large source of emissions has been from a single source, which is deforestation. Uh, since deforestation has been the driving force behind the carbon emissions, so the Ministry of Energy and uh, Environment and Energy, which is in charge of this sector, has to lead, uh, take the re leading role to uh, take an action for the reduction. While Korea and Japan, uh, they are industrial economies and they're uh, largely depending on the industries. So, there are also different sectors that have been involved in the economic growth of the country, including transport, including buildings, and definitely industries, and also agriculture. So the all ministries which are irrespectively in charge of those sectors, uh, they should work um, in coordination, uh, in, 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 in coordination, in, they should work together in different um, the sectors. Uh, let me first check the chattings. I've uh, ignored some of the chattings, but um, okay. So uh, it seems there is no um, question at the moment on the comments. So let me respond to those comments um, after uh, this um, before the Q and A session. Is it fine? Yeah. Okay. Um, since I'm not a um, expert for Costa Rica and Japan, but I believe we have separate um, in-depth session for each country, um, maybe next day. So I will now dive into the case of Korea. And this is, okay, I have around 15 minutes left. So let me um, like quickly um, go through all the, the, the Mm, the slides. Um, so Korea is now under the climate change crisis for sure. So we have uh, the change of weather, we have change of um, the climate. And as you've seen here, because we are industry dependent country, um, the uh, energy sector has the highest emission around 87 percent of the national emissions and as seen we have um, the highest growth rate of uh, emission in the oecd area um, let me uh, briefly give the um, the introduction about the 2050 carbon neutrality and green growth committee uh, which is the decision making body um, of Korea's carbon neutrality under uh, the president's office. So they are co-chaired by prime minister and also civilian co-chair person. And now they're in their second term um, and the members are composed of government ministers and also president appointed uh, experts from different sectors. And their term is two years, and their role is to review the carbon neutrality related policies and plans and also assess and follow up the implementation plans and also public relations. Um, the, their their um, role is uh, uh, the written under the decree, the presidential decree of the committee. And they have different functions. And one of the, uh, the main um, roles is to develop the Korean uh, carbon neutrality scenarios. And this was already announced and was, in, uh, was integrated to the indices of Korea, which was submitted to the Paris, uh, the UNFCCC last year. Um, and they also have the secretariat which is under the prime minister's office. Um, and this is their four subcommittees, the greenhouse gas reduction. They are the one who uh, make the scenarios uh, mainly and also energy and industry transition because of the economic structure of Korea and the just transition. This is the, mm, the sector, uh, the, the, the section uh, for the Korea to focus 
because uh, there should be the industrial transition uh, because of uh, the government policies to move to green industries. And also we have um, international cooperation uh, part uh, such as hydrogen import and also CCUS and also um, the um, the the trading trading mechanism, the emissions trading mechanism, and also the carbon market. So we definitely need international cooperation. And this is the structure of the secretariat uh, under uh, the prime minister office, and they are the the public office, public organization that support the committee, and they are the coordinating body of the carbon neutrality of Korea. So um, the ministries, they are doing the leading role in Korea because we have also centralized approach to carbon neutrality. And as I um, just briefly mentioned, Korea um, has uh, adopted the coordinating governance rather than uh, led by one or two ministries. But definitely Ministry of Environment, they are the one who's leading this uh, movement. So, and they are the one who legislated um, the law on framework act on carbon neutrality. And they're in charge of the, the setting the targets and also evaluate uh, the implementation. And they are setting the carbon neutrality strategy as well. Um, and the GR, GIR, uh, the Greenhouse Gas Inventory Research Center, they are the one who's making the information and data and evidence for the development of the, the policies. And um, they are uh, the science-based institute uh, which provides the, the evidence for the policy development. Um, the second um, main uh, leading ministry is Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy because Korea's uh, emissions are, most of the Korean emissions are coming from energy sector. So this, min this ministry should work uh, well. And they're definitely focused on energy and also renewable energy uh, production generation. And um, this, this ministry uh, is definitely in charge of um, the reduction apart from the different different um, different industries, uh, including petrochemical, including uh, steels, and uh, they definitely have to develop uh, the climate technologies that can be uh, the alternative technology for the carbon 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 um, emitting industries. Um, the economy and finance, they are in charge of mobilizing resources for green investment and the climate response fund, which will be covered uh, by the next session. Um, they have mobilized this fund and they're gonna they have set different organization, government organization who are fully in charge of operating this fund. And also they are the national designated authority of GCF, Green Climate Fund uh, of Korea. And the Ministry of Science and ICT, uh, they're in charge of the development and transfer of climate technology. So they have um, developed 10 priority technologies that should uh, be embraced by the government uh, that will lead the carbon neutrality innovation. And they are the national designated en en entity uh, of the UNFCCC, who is working with the uh, Climate Technology Center and Network, CTC, and under UNFCCC. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs, they are also in charge uh, in uh, the coordination with the foreign policy and climate change. And we have the ambassador for climate change. There is one uh, representative uh, who's working with the foreign policy. And we have two different, uh, more, more or less implementing agencies, one from meteorological, one from forest. So they are respectively uh, in charge of their own field. Mm. I've just put uh, the, all the 
uh, carbon neutrality related low carbon policies by different ministries. So uh, there we have the, the overarching carbon neutrality green growth framework uh, under the, the framework act. And also we have energy plan, we have sustainable development plan, renewable energy plan, transport, hydrogen economy, and resources circulation, and also green building. So we have all different roles and responsibility uh, by the ministry under their own way, under their own sector. So that's why Korea has adopted coordination and governance structure um, to carbon neutrality. Mm. We have set uh, basically three um, the sub goals, uh, which is first of them is the institutional foundation development for carbon neutrality. And we have uh, different uh, ministries who will be in charge of uh, sub indicators, such as green finance and R&D. And the second one is the just transition into a carbon neutral society. And this is also orchestrated by uh, the ministries in charge. Yep. Um, uh, I will move to the last part, which is stakeholder engagement. Uh, this is uh, the key factor of governance, the, the debt zero governance. And in Korea, uh, maybe that will be similar to different countries, but in, in Korea as well, uh, we have public institutions, including ministries and also local government. And also we have private sector businesses and we have citizens, so civil society who are joining in climate governance. So public institutions, they have their own role uh, to cooperate with carbon neutral policy measures, their policy development, in charge policy development and implementation, and also assessment. And uh, local government, they should play the big role because um, uh, without the action, without the implementation at the local level, the national uh, goal cannot be achieved at all. So there should be more capacity uh, building and um, empowerment in the local government. Uh, if I can just share the govern governance structure of Korea, we are very much hierarchical, centralized country. So actually, we do not call local government government, but they are actually authorities. So they are just part of the national government. So without the support, financial or human resource support by the national government, uh, the local government cannot actually implement what's given by the national government as a responsibility. So there should be um, the capacity uh, building of local government for the local actions. And the second, um, the second actor, uh, the group of actor is private sector for sure. Uh, they are the one who should minimize GHG emissions, especially from the industry part and also transport. And at the same time, they should invest in green technology and green industries. So here, the, the term called ESG, Environment, uh, so, so, Social and Governance, this ESG um, investment should work. And Korea has already established a standard for Korean um, ESG for the private sectors to consider for their um, investment. And the third part is definitely the citizens and um, who should um, support green life um, uh, for the action in daily lives. Uh, I will well, uh, lastly just um, introduce two, two, um, the, um, yeah, two, two actions by for the public awareness and the public participation. The first is the carbon point system. I think your country already has um, uh, implemented this. This is not new concept, but I think it works well because it's um, integrated with the economic uh, scheme. So the environment of uh, the, the Ministry of Environment has initiated this program since 2009. 
and the local governments have operated uh, the carbon point system. It's a voluntary uh, mechanism. So the residential buildings and complexes and also commercial buildings, uh, they should install a meter with a unique number so that it can be reported. And the individual household business and also complex apartment complex Korea, uh, most of the residential form, uh, format of the uh, of uh, the residential residential format in Korea is mostly apartments complex, uh, uh, more than thousand households. Um, so if they have more than 150 households, they are eligible to join to participate and also public school they can join this program. So, uh, as it's okay, yeah, uh, it's a very um, simple uh, mechanism that they reduce um, their usage of gas, water, electricity. Then that amount of uh, reduction will be repaid as the point, which is uh, actually money. So they will receive uh, e either cash or voucher or local cash. Uh, by uh, the repayment of, as the repayment of their uh, reduction. Uh, so uh, on the right side, we had a revision a uh, few, few years ago, a uh, few years ago, then the government has uh, raised four times uh, for the residential, uh, for the commercial buildings, which means uh, we um, have uh, the lot of um, energy consumption, and electricity from the commercial buildings. Uh, this is the climate change week uh, that we have uh, in every April. This is also led by the Ministry of e Environment. And I will, uh, if I have, no time, so I will keep, but we have like 10 minutes of light out uh, in, in the nation. And, and for 10 minutes of light out, we um, had the achievement of 52 tons of carbon emissions reduction. And we have uh, such talk online meeting uh, by um, renowned professionals and also politicians. And also we have SNS current news uh, for public awareness and those kind of guidable for people to take, uh, to implement in their life. So this is the um, end of my uh, just presentation and um, I'd love to uh, talk with you. Uh, I think I made time, I, I made um, the perfect timing. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for listening.